Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo, I'm a Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Today I have here with me Sanjay from IBM. Hi Sanjay. Hi Eduardo. Hello everybody. My name is Sanjay Doifure, I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with IBM. So Sanjay, we have uh, uh, customers today that they, uh, they have data, they come to us and they have data running on, uh, residing on premises and data on AWS and they're trying to solve problems where how can we combine this data um, you know, to build uh, uh, machine learning infused applications where we can get predictions from, you know, all the, all this vast catalog of data that we have accumulated over, over the years. And we, we want to build new uh, applications that help us, you know, differentiate our business. And so how can we do that uh, when we're talking about using uh, IBM Cloud Pack for data to help these uh, developers. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. I think that's a very common uh, pattern that we have seen. Uh, so what you're talking about is basically a hybrid cloud methodology where some of your data is on-premise and uh, rest of the data is on a cloud, on a public cloud, right? And the so data on-premises could be DB2, it could be other types of databases. Exactly. It can be different applications or different data warehouse repositories, right? Exactly. So like uh, on this diagram, uh, you have IBM DB2, for example, or any other databases that are residing in your corporate data center on premises. But now some of your data might be on AWS, say on S3 or Redshift, right? Okay. So now you want to combine these data, for example. And you want to combine data that's coming on different formats as well, right? Relational database, NoSQL data, you know, unstructured data, things e like that, right? Exactly. And that's where this pattern of a data fabric. So data fabric is, is not a product, it's a pattern where it lets you provide data to your end users wherever it resides, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's on-prem or on the cloud, uh, and it provides that seamless integration, right? So that data fabric is that layer. Now, Cloud Pack for Data supports data fabric architecture, okay. right? Uh, so if you look at it, Cloud Pack for Data is a unified data and AI platform built okay. by IBM. So it has several components in it, which you are essentially required for any kind of data processing. So for example, there's data stage okay. for ETL processing. Uh, there's a Watson Studio for building machine learning models. Okay. Uh, there's uh, Watson Open Scale. Uh, so those two components on the right side, uh, Studio and Open Scale. You, open Scale you can use to monitor the models, machine learning to deploy those models, and then we were previously talking about data fabric. So the data virtualization, in concert with the Watson Knowledge Catalog, is what gives you that data fabric. Okay. Right? which uh, provides you that virtualization layer. So for example, if I am a data scientist and I want to access some data, some of it could be on DB2 and some of it could be say on Redshift, right? Okay. Now, so you don't actually need to move the data that you have on premises to the cloud. You can combine what you have on premises with the data that you have on Redshift or Aurora. Right. Uh, to build a, a virtual catalog using Watson Knowledge Catalog. Right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. There is no physical data movement. The data is uh, where it resides, but you are building a view on top of it. Okay. Right? So that's uh, that's that that is possible using the Watson Knowledge Catalog and the data virtualization layer. Okay. And can you also use that to control who has access to data and anonymize data that? you know, shouldn't be readable, let's say, to, to yes. data scientists and developers. Exactly, so you can do all kinds of, uh, say, data masking, data security, okay. using knowledge, uh, Watson uh, Knowledge Catalog. Uh, and the other beauty of Cloud Pack for Data, it has pre-built connectors to uh, some of the third-party databases and to AWS uh, databases. Yeah, I was going to ask you, so if you think about the flow that we would see here, these connectors would allow us to directly connect to these uh, different data sources and 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 expose them to knowledge. Uh, what's a knowledge catalog? Exactly. So your on-premise databases, from uh, for example, your uh, databases here, they could go into your CP4D, your AWS server. All these data sources here, they can come back come to the CP4D. And then basically all these comp components work in concert to create that data fabric. Okay, okay. So 
Now, let's imagine that I have my data and I need to prepare that data to train the models. Then you mentioned data stages and ETL um, uh, tool from Qualpack for Data, so I could use that to you know, modify the formats or do some kind of data cleansing. Yes. And then I can use that with Watson Studio to build and train my models, correct? Exactly. And so then once those models are ready, then you can then persist them into Amazon S3. Okay. Now, this is one thing that is I get asked a lot by customers is, do I use Watson or Sage or SageMaker? Can I use them together? So yeah, it, it is possible to use them together, right? You can use it together. Uh, so depending on the use case and so for example, you already have say some models that were trained using SageMaker, so you can continue using that but then you can import those notebooks, for example, into Watson Studio, so right? if we would imagine here, if we think about what you said before, right? If we were preparing and, and, and training uh, the models we've got back for data, we would move these models into S3, mm -hmm. and we can use this data with SageMaker, right. train our models mm -hmm. with SageMaker, and eventually, we would once we have the model, these models would be stored on S3, and we can deploy these models using uh, SageMaker endpoint. That's but correct. you also said that if we have models that we started building on SageMaker, we can also import them into Watson Studio, right? That's correct. And uh, so once you have all these components working, right? So whether you, ha you know, uh, you have existing models which were say were in Watson Studio, now you're deploying it for example, a SageMaker or vice versa, uh, you can use then OpenScale, what's okay. an OpenScale, to monitor those models, Okay. right? So for example, you can uh, monitor for the fairness, uh, explainability, and uh, how compliant those are, right? Okay. So, this so I is, could have my model that's running on a, a, a SageMaker endpoint being monitored by, oops, sorry. That's the, yeah, yeah so that's by open scale. open scale, right? Yes, yes, yes. So yes, you, you, you can do all of that. Uh, be, because of the native integrations which IBM and AWS have built, this is what makes it much more easier uh, okay. from a customer's point of view. Okay, now likewise, if you have the, your models uh, done with Watson Studio, and you deploy them, like you said, with Watson Machine Learning Endpoint, you can also monitor this with open scale, right? Exactly. Yep, that's right. Okay, so that's very, very interesting. So this shows how uh, IBM and AWS are working together to build this better together experience for customers, right? Where they can combine the power of IBM solutions and AWS to build a new and exciting workloads, correct? Exactly. And it kind of fits into IBM's strategy of uh, a hybrid cloud and AI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of fits into our overall strategy to help our customers. All right. Thank you, Sanjay. This has been a very good uh, conversation. I really appreciate it. I hope you uh, liked it, and we we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Eduardo. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.